Anyway, so what does that mean? What does that mean for your retirement? What does that mean for, for okay, consumer confidence right now is bad. It's, it's, it's pretty negative. I mean, there's a lot of money still sitting in cash. We saw the market take drop the last three months. We had a little bit of a bounce in the last seven days. Market's flat today. Um, let's kind of talk about that. One of the reasons why I invited some new people to my luncheon today was because of clients walking in my office and telling me, hey, I went to this workshop and this sounds really good. Why are annuities the number one recommended investment in America? Why? Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. This was on CNN. There's a new, uh, a new law that they're trying to pass that basically makes it illegal for advisors to sell these high comp products like fixed annuities that are bilking five billion a year from seniors. Bilking. And that's what I get. I see these flyers. I ask my clients, did you go? And they go, yeah. They talked about whole life. They talked about private equity. They talked about annuities. And of course, the industry's pushing back because the industry's making billions by getting these advisors to sell these products that are paying obscene amounts of money. Whole life insurance. Uh, I don't know if anybody here has heard the tax-free 401k, where you could put money in whole life, especially doctors. What they do is they go to surgeons, even attorneys. They go, listen, instead of that 401k, let's put money, let's put 80, 100 grand into a whole life policy. It'll be worth two, three million when you're 65 or 70. Then you borrow against it tax-free. So it's a tax-free 401k. And that's the big, that's the big shtick, Steve. It sounds like you've heard of that. Well, the problem is, is that true or false? Well, here's the problem. Gross is severely stunted by the cost of insurance and the massive commissions. The returns you are quoted are gross, not net of fees. So they say 8% a year, but when you look back, you say, wait a minute, that doesn't compound at 8% a year. Capital is not liquid. Withdrawals incur large surrender charges. You accumulate your cash by paying extra premium. When you borrow, your money is tax-free, but you have to pay interest on your own money. So it's like, well, wait a minute, especially now, interest rates are not 1%. So what is that interest rate, 8%? So maybe you should have just done that 401k and just paid the RMD. When you pass, the cash value is lost and you just get the face value. So now you got, you got, a, you got a $4 million policy, you got $2 million in cash, but when you die, the cash goes away, you just get the $4 million face. So people don't know that. It's like... So it's, it's really just a compensation scheme. And here's what's interesting. I do, I do as a financial planner, I do have an insurance license. So if somebody needs long-term care or something, we can do it at the firm. But I must tell you that whole life insurance, if at the $80,000 premium, the agent's making $90,000 in commission right away, like a check. And they're going to to going to the Tesla deal and driving away with the Tesla because of your one sale. So anyway, and the same thing with private equity. So what do I hear on Bloomberg yesterday is what they're doing is private equity firms are doing these lavish lunches to financial advisors and telling them why they need to get into private equity. Uh, Vinny showed me, I, Vinny, I think we left it in the car, in the front page of the Business Journal, 30%, um, 30%, Vacancy rate in Denver now in, in, in um, commercial buildings, 30%. 30% vacancy rates. Private equity is all about commercial real estate. It's about leasing. It's about, and the thing about private equity, I was talking, it tends to do very, very well when markets go down. Last year was not a good year. Private equity explodes. And here's what's really interesting. This is the, this is the, this is the New York Times article. Companies bar, uh, bought by private equity firms are far more likely to go bankrupt than companies that aren't. Been doing this 35 years. Carlisle, I know you a long time. I was young and stupid. And I must tell you, when I was a young financial advisor, I liked, I was lured by private equity. I got a call from one of my clients that lives in Hawaii. He says, Don, let me ask you a question. Why should I invest... Why should I be invested in your investments in the stock market when I can get, I'm getting 12% in my private equity? I said, I said, Kumar, how safe do you think private equity is? Private equity is non, private equity is non-rated debt. In other words, when you buy a, a U.S. Treasury bond, it says AAA rated. 
When you buy a corporate bond, it might say double A rated. Now, and this is interesting, average five-year corporate bond rating returns. So if I look at a triple A rated bond and I look at the default rate, I see that it's 0.085. So if I buy a triple A rated bond, what's the chances that bond is going to go to zero? Pretty much nothing. If I buy a BAA bond, my default rate is 1.72. When I buy a C-rated bond, my default rate goes up to 39 to 47%. When I buy a non-rated bond, NA, there's no, there's no rating. So I was talking to one of my team, um, you know, you guys know Jay. I know you guys know Jay. I mean, I mean some of my clients have been for a long time. Jay worked for me. Jay, Jay, um, Jay used to work for me, and then I, she asked me to, find, uh, to sponsor us for our CFP, and I did. So, and then she moved to uh, Philadelphia. Her husband was finishing uh, school at the University of Pennsylvania. And then she moved back to Denver. And I said, Jay, do you want to come back to work for me? She said, no, I want to start my own firm. So I ran into her at Whole Foods. And she's got two cute kids. And I had my great Dane. And that's my, you know, and, and, and you know, he's cool. So anyway, I said, Jay, what are you doing? She said, I'm doing private equity. And I kind of, I said, well, you know how I feel about that? And she goes, I know. I, I said, do you really feel, but, but the truth of the matter is, I'm not saying, I'm not saying I, I love Jay and I think she's a great, but private equity pays about 10% commission. You know, so the, so the bottom line is, I just, think, uh, uh, I just think that, unfortunately, a lot of products are sold in the financial service industry. Are they sold for the best reasons for clients? And, and I... I'm, I'm disappointed with my industry. I guess that's what I'm saying. The original index annuity, I want to talk a little bit about this. Um, I remember in 1996, I went, I remember I went to a, I got a call from a insurance company called Liberty Mutual in 1996. And he said, hey, we're having, we got a new annuity coming out. It's called a fixed index annuity. And would you like to come to this workshop? There was about 12 financial advisors in the room in 1996. And he basically said, we have a new product called an index annuity. You can, get, you can get market returns without market risk. It's a five-year commitment. If the market's up 30, depending on your participation, you get 21. If the market's down, you lose nothing. And every year, you lock in. So I said, this sounds too good to be true. So it became very popular, and I did. I did put clients into this. Carlisle, you remember that. Well, what happened was insurance companies started to take all the value away and raise the compensation. I haven't recommended an index annuity since 2005. And the reason was is because now an index annuity says, I'll give you a great return. It's a 10-year annuity. But in small print, they say, but after the first year, we could change your participation. We can change your return. So all of a sudden, year two, my client calls me and says, wait a minute. Most I can make this year is 5%. So the bottom line is that I said, I can't put my client into this. And that's what was happening. And that's what happens with these products is they're a canard. They're not what they're purported to be. But fixed annuity is a bait and switch product. It's the number one product sold in America today. And it pisses me off. It just pisses me off. The compensation is 10%. You, put a, you give the agent a million dollars and he's making 100 grand in one day one day. That's what drives the comp. And, and that's not, that's not, I believe in hell. Okay. Uh, so here's what we did as a firm. What we did as a firm is we tore apart the index. We tore apart this product. I've been doing this a long time. I'm not stupid. I have a good team that works for me. And we said, can we deliver the value back? Can we figure out how they're doing it? Can I deliver it back to my, to my client? And we were able to do that. We actually do use something called an index treasury note. I made that word up. That's my word. It was kind of interesting. Index treasuries are safer than annuities. Doesn't lock capital up for 10 years. Usually a one-year commitment. Uh, not forced to receive money back over lifetime. You don't have to annuitize. It's not an annuity. Over long term beats the market with zero downside risk. In fact, uh, I recently ran. Looks like we're cut off there, Vinny. Vinny Gumbats, it seems like we're cut off. Anyway, I ran the numbers just on the current index treasuries that I've got you guys into. You're doing better than 100% total return on the market, and you don't have any downside risk. 
You're getting about 66 of, uh, 60% of the upside and none of the downside. So why would I be in the market, especially at, at the, you know, you guys, I mean, Carlisle, you can't afford to be 100% in the market. You're very conservative. I know you are. I know where your money is. So you're saying, well, Dom, okay, if I can get the upside but cut off my tail, deliver back the value that they once had, then let's do it. And of course, the way it works is if the market goes down, they don't lose. If the market goes up, they make. It's what the index annuity was 23 years ago. When I look at the numbers, I could see that my index treasuries over that long-term blowout, even the 60-40, the, the total return. But look at the downside risk. Look at your max drawdown. And that's the reason why you can't, as a retiree, be in the market. You can't afford that. How many of my clients said to me, Dom, I got to go back to work. Not my clients, but I picked up a, uh, I picked up a referral um, at the beginning, of, the beginning of this year because his broker lost him 30%, uh, lost, lost him 30%, and um, he basically came to me. He said, Dom, I have to go back to work. And the bottom line is that now he is, uh, he's with me, but that he took, he took a 30% loss in 22, and now he's back to work. He was retired. Him and his girlfriend were going to move to Costa Rica, buy a house. Because of that loss, he's back to work. And you don't want to do that. There's actually other products that we can put you into that are a little bit more same concept, but a little bit more buffered. So anyway, I want to finish up with... <laughs> It does put us in a win-win situation. It does put us in a win-win situation. So let's talk about something that happened. Um, one of my clients called me up and he said to me, Dom, can I afford to retire? It's a great question. He's 64 years old. He lives in New York. And I said, Andrew, let's do a financial plan. And by the way, you guys know that as clients, financial plans are complimentary. So I said, Let's figure out if you can get, if you, you know. But here's the problem. Andrew, extremely conservative. Andrew believes the market is going to heck in a handbasket. So Andrew basically does what? Andrew is, is, fills out the questionnaire, and he basically, his questionnaire basically says that he should be in the most conservative portfolio, what we call capital preservation. 67% in Bonds, 5% in the market, 5% in stocks, 28% in cash. I ran the plan, and guess what? I said, Andrew, you're not going to be able to retire. You're going to run out of money by 2050. So then he says to me, well, okay, Dom, what if I put all my money in the S&P 500? Plan failed at, at, at the, the recommended portfolio on Money Guide Pro. So I said, okay, let's assume we put all your money in the stock market. Well, here's the problem. Probability that his plan is going to succeed is 68%. Now, what, the way the software works, ladies and gentlemen, the way the software works is it runs something called a Monte Carlo. Does anybody know what a Monte Carlo is? John, do you know what a Monte, you know what a Monte Carlo is? Monte Carlo looks at sequence of returns. Let me use... Let me use an example. When you retire, if you get unlucky and the first three or four years of your retirement is, you could run out of money. Whereas if you, when you retire, if your sequence of return isn't so bearish, then maybe you don't outlive your money. Let me blow this up for people in the back. So let's assume the first, I retire at 65 and I come into a bear market, negative 13, negative 20, negative 15. I'm running out of money by 81. But if I was lucky, and the market actually did good the first three or four years, then my money lasts till I'm 95. So what Monte Carlo does is run a thousand years of, of returns based on volatility return of standard deviation, as you know, John. And what it does is it comes up with probability of success. So what I told Andy was, let's look at the most popular mix in financial planning, 60-40. 60-40 gave him an 84% probability of success. I said, okay, that's in the green zone, but here's what happened. When I ran a bear market scenario, his probability of success dropped to 64 and 57. So I said, Andy, here's the problem. If you're unlucky, if, if you retire and you and, and, and Julie are in a situation 
where you go a sequence of bear markets, no, it's, it's, it's a flip of the coin. Well, he wasn't happy about that. Okay, and, and 6040 was developed by Markowitz. But anyway, the 6040, the problem with the 6040 is it's based on having 60% of your money in, in stocks and 40% of your money in bonds. Okay, so the bottom line is, here's, here's the bottom line. The bottom line is, think about this, ladies and gentlemen. You've got, you've got your stock market doing this, and you've got interest rates going down for 40 years. So bonds are going up, and stocks are volatile. Well, if, bonds, if interest rates go down, bond prices go up. So think about this for a second. You're in a situation where if I got a volatile market, but my bond portfolio is sort of the parachute, it dampens my volatility. But if we're starting a regime of higher interest rates, I'm not sure a 60-40 stock bond mix is a good way to invest. In fact, last year was one of the worst years for 6040 because the 30-year Treasury was down 33%. It was down more as much as the NASDAQ. So anyway, not to get too complicated, I'm not sure that 6040 that showed an 84% prob is realistic going forward. And that's what I told Andy. And in the bear market scenario, eh, I don't like 57%, Andrew. So... It failed. So then he said, well, Tom, what if I just bought, what if interest rates stayed at 5% for my retirement? I said, okay, let me run that through the software. It still failed. It failed because it wasn't enough growth. So he's getting discouraged. I said, Andrew, let me try this. Why don't we, why don't we do this? And here's what, just, let me just as a sidebar. If you, ladies and gentlemen, if you go to a bank and buy a CD, what does a bank do with that money? They buy a treasury and they take the difference. Ladies and gentlemen, call Mallory. That's stupid. Call Mallory. I don't charge, I don't charge to buy T-bills. John, we talked about this. That we don't manage that. So we'll just buy a T-bill with five and a half percent in your account and do, cut out the bank. So anybody that's thinking about rolling over this CD, just call Mallory and say, hey, could you put a T-bill in my, in my account, my Schwab account? Yes. And no fees and right now, eh, four and a half, depending. Uh, four, you know, that's where the one year is trading right now, about there. Anyway, so here's what we did. We said, why don't we look at the index treasury, sort of that old index annuity back 23 years ago that we sort of ripped apart the engine. And let's see if we can't get this to work. Guess what happened? 95 probability of success. Why? Because I'm cutting off that downside tail. Every year, I'm locking in a gain, right? And every year, if the market's down, I'm, I'm not losing if the market's down. It's what the index annuity was in 1997. So it's pretty exciting. Anyway, cash is not a retirement strategy, Susan. We talked about that. Um, invest 100% of your money in the stock market has too much volatility. 60-40 has historically been good, but... If rising interest rates are happening, eh, it's not the return on your money, it's the return of your money. It's the volatility of return on your money that grows wealth. Invest in treasuries and play with the interest. That's a Buffett strategy, and that's essentially what we're doing with an index treasury. And we talked about that 96% confidence zone. That made Andy feel really good. Andy is still working, but he hopes to retire in the next year. And... Um, he just called me, called me uh, two days ago and says, should I pay off my house? And I said, what's your interest rate? He says, um, it was five and a half. I said, you're up about 8% year to date on your investments. So absolutely not. I said, because you're making money on the bank's money. If you thought the market was going to be negative for the next five years, yes. But if your cost, the opportunity cost of capital, I said, Andy, is such that your interest, your interest on your mortgage is low enough to where the gains on your investment should outpace that. So I said, don't, don't, in my opinion, no. But it's up to him because he, he wants to get rid of that payment. He wants to get rid of that $2,000 payment. So that's going to make him feel like, okay, I've got more money to, to retire. But I said, you know, let's continue to revisit that. But that's an interesting. I think as interest rates go up, this concept is going to get better. Um, I can almost get you 100% of the market today with about 15% downside protection. 
Um, and that's exciting. If the market's down 15, you lose nothing. If the market's down 16, you're down one. If the market's up 10, you're up 10. On a one-year, one-year, on a one-year lock-in.